What's going on guys and welcome back to the Honeystead. I think we're due for a good old-fashioned farm vlog so come for a walk with me. I'll show you guys some of the things that has happened behind the scenes that I'm going to apologize. I have not taken the camera with me and I'll tell you what we've been up to. What are you doing Miss Violet? You gonna go for a walk with me? Huh? What you smelling? What is it? What is it? What'd you say, Violet? Oh, you're so good, girl. What's going on, Miss Tex? Where's that baby? Is she over in that other field? Let's go look at all my babies. Hi, little babies. It's okay. It's okay. All right, so these babies came from Murray McMurray Hatchery, and I know that you guys might have caught that clip of my kind of, it was a day that was kind of all over the place, um, but I wanted to give you guys an update. These babies are now, I think they're two weeks old. Are you two weeks old yet? Almost two weeks old. And when we first got them, I mean, one could literally fit in my hand. And my hands are pretty small, but look, but they pretty much doubled in size. And I am very impressed with these guys. And so far, out of all the baby chicks that we've received from Murray McMurray Hatchery, we did lose one. And I kind of, you know, that is to be expected. I think we had a little bit of a bully issue on that one. I don't think it was you, but it might have been one of those. But regardless, we have still had a very high success rate on, on raising out these babies. Now, these will be at eight weeks, they will be ready to be processed. And they're gonna average around four to five pounds. On one of my next videos, I wanna take you guys with me when we go to put them um, down into our bottom pasture and put them in our chicken tractor. And I actually wanna to talk to you guys about how we're gonna raise them and talk to you guys about the cost effectiveness on, our, on the feed, on the amount of feed. And kind of, depending on where you're at in your homesteading journey, if you plan on raising. Okay, okay, I'm gonna say, say, say bye. I know you wanna go back with your friends. Okay. But I do, I want to talk to you guys about kind of giving you an idea on, on how much food you're going to need based off of how many meat chickens you're going to raise. Now again, this breed is the Cornish Jumbo Cross, so they are going to get rather large rather quickly. And we do like to process them at like eight weeks old, um, just because when I'm cooking, and we'll talk about that. When I'm cooking a, a chicken, I kind of need it to fit in my roasting pan and I don't want to have to cook a turkey every single time. Um, but we'll talk about all of that and I just wanted to give you guys an update on these babies. Soon enough, I'm thinking in about two weeks, we will be moving them outside, maybe even less than that. But I'm definitely impressed with the way these guys are growing and I've been going out and picking up handfuls of grass and clover and starting to introduce that to them as well because that is mainly going to be what they're gonna be eating. For right now though, they're gonna stay in this barn just because they're just not quite big enough. Not quite big enough to be moved down in that chicken tractor. You gotta show off them horns that you got. Look at your baby horns. Come here. Nope, you're too interested in Violet. I know. Come here, Missy. Let me see your face. No? All right, let's get Reba's attention. Reba! Come here. Come here. No? But my goat will come say hi. Hi, Kiwi. Give me this. Come here. You are losing that fur of yours. Let's show these people. Oh my goodness. Kiwi, you need a bath. <laughs> Look at you over there losing that fur. We got to up your minerals. You're not too bad. Look at that. Oh, does that feel good? Does that feel good? You're just a crazy little goat. You're just a crazy little goat. 
You're such a beautiful girl. My babies. Got paint all over you. Yeah. What did I tell you about trying to trying to rub up on that fence when we were painting? You're such a brat. Well, look at you, Mama Pig. When are you going to have babies? Hmm? Oh, you're covered in mud. Did you find a good mud hole in your spa over there? I see you've got... <coughs> really? Are you going to be that way? You're such a brat. Definitely a packing order between the pigs, but she'll be fine. Uh, we're getting ready to probably move her into her own little paddock because if all goes well, um, she's going to be pharaoh in here in the next little while. i got to look at my dates to find out. These are the next generation of our breeders. I've got two 100% pure Berkshire girls. And then if you guys remember, these are the two girls, the two mangas we got from Jess and Jeremiah over at Roots and Refuge. Well, hi, girls. You guys enjoying being over here? You guys enjoying being over here? The younger gilts, they're not ready to be put in with the boar yet. We, uh, we want to grow them out a little bit longer, but possibly the Berkshires are going to be bred first. Um, and that hopefully by looking at timing, we'll end up having piglets around January is kind of what we're kind of what we're planning out for for the next the next line. So we purchased Miss Reba last year and she'd actually never really been with that many cows. She, from my understanding, she was raised more with goats and sheep. She was a local young lady's FFA project, which is this gorgeous longhorn that we have over in this pasture. I've been keeping a really close eye on her. She has been accepted into our herd. Um, she does really well with the little baby, the bull, when we had the bull, I was kind of a little nervous, you know, because she didn't really show much sign that that she was in heat and she didn't show, we just didn't really see anything. Well, the other day, my mom came out here and she was looking at her, she was like, something's different, something's different with Reba. And so I looked at her backside and sure enough, uh, she has started to develop a nice little udder and she has what people call, what they, what they call springing, which is things are kind of getting a little loose back there. So when it's time for her to calf, um, obviously she'll be, she'll, her body will be, be ready and prepared. So I, if I can get her over here, I want to see, I want you guys to kind of see. I'm still with her, I have no idea. Like I, I normally am pretty good at least for my other cows on being like, yeah, it's gonna happen. I know when it's gonna happen. But with her, I, I guess I don't know what to expect because I'm still kind of new on reading her. And I'm really hoping that she's, her mother instincts are gonna kick in and I'm hoping that she's gonna accept this baby. Um, and you know, there's always a little bit of a fear of a first time, especially one that's, she's a couple years old. So if y'all could say a prayer that this Miss Reba calves beautifully, um, and accepts this baby and we might get our first spring hot day thunderstorm. I feel it. I feel the winds changing. Sorry Violet. You can't come in. Sorry girl. I know. You want to be with your mama. I don't quite know how much time we have until she gives us a baby but from the looks of it she's got a nice little otter. And she's definitely getting more relaxed on the backside. So, like I said, fingers crossed, everything will go well. Maybe sooner. Maybe sooner than later. What is it, Violet? You tell me. Uh-oh. What is it? Go be scary and ferocious. Go on. You tell me something's over there? What is it, huh?
My mom and I came up here and spent an entire day up in the apiary, and I wanted to give you a bee update because we came out of winter with like 21 colonies, um, which was very awesome. Uh, we had 100% success rate for overwintering our bees. So, so far, all the colonies are queen right. Uh, brood pattern looks beautiful. I'm going to apologize for not taking you guys with me um, and my mom when we went to go do all of our splits and creating all of our nukes um, in the background for some of our customers that we have that are going to be purchasing bees from us this year. I do have a couple extra nukes, so if anyone is interested in purchasing nukes this year from us, we have five frame deeps that will be ready to go here in the next couple of weeks. I'll put my email down below, so if anyone is interested, we can start that communication, start that conversation. Okay, so there is also two more big changes that has happened to the barn behind me. So, we've got garage doors. And not only that, let's go inside. Mm hmm. There is also one more thing that we can check off the list. Not concrete yet, that's coming. But let me show you. My husband did a really awesome job on, on these lights. So these lights are LED. And as of right now, all of the lights in the shop part have been done. We still have a good bit to do over where we're gonna have the kitchen and my office area. Um, and then we're gonna do some of the lights outside as well, but I think we're still kind of looking and figuring out which ones we actually want to want to put up. And I also know that he plans on putting lights up around each garage door, and then of course, around the actual like entrance door. But it's, this is like game changer. Game changer. <sighs> yeah. Definitely been a work in progress, but it's awesome. And I'm excited to just sit up here and, and admire all of this hard work. It's amazing that it's come so far in just such a short period of time. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys. It's dark. No, nope, no, it's not. Never mind. It's not dark anymore. Oh, yep, yeah, it's dark. Nope. Oh, not anymore. Can you see what you're doing in the shop, Carson? Yeah. Yeah? There's daylight in here. <laughs> 